Hello and welcome back to another part in my UPS NAS series. What I'm trying to do with this series of videos is utilize this CyberPower NAS. Once again, thanks for sending it, guys. And I'm going to be connecting it to a QNAP NAS, in this case, the brand new TS251D. So enormous overkill using a 1500 class UPS for this. But what we're really looking at today is we want to see what happens when a NAS connected to a UPS loses mains power connection. What that means in real terms is what happens to the QNAP in the event of the UPS, which is what it's running from, losing power to the outside world. Will the QNAP alert us and how will it alert us? What happens to, to from the perspective of you, the end user, when you are relying on your network attached storage device for home or business for surveillance and file access and backups and more in the event of mains power failure. So we're gonna connect these up. Right now, this is an empty box because the NAS in question is over there. You can probably hear it in the test area. And then I'm going to pull the power from the mains connection between this and the wall, and then see what happens to the QNAP, how it registers it and what happens from that point. And I'll try to make sure we've got loads of interaction with the QNAP so we can get some real time information on that. But otherwise, we should probably make our way to the laptop screen. Right, so we've made our way onto QTS on our brand new QNAP here, the TS251D. Now, I've had to power down the device, of course, so we can connect the UPS for the very first time, and straight away, we can see here that the UPS has been recognized. Uh, we can find out more information by clicking that tab there, and then it will give us this screen here. But if you want to go into it manually, you can make your way into the control panel, and from the control panel, go to external device. Once again, today we'll be using OBS as always. So OBS should record everything on screen, but if there's any delays or slight uh, fractured graphics there, we do kind of have to put it down to my GPU getting used quite a lot. But moving forward, we can take a look at the UPS. If we click that tab, we can see that the UPS has already been identified. We've got a USB connection. There are other means with which you can connect to UPS using the network, and the CyberPower 1500 does arrive with a bunch of um, UPS server network options as well. But for now, we're focusing just on the UPS NAS side of things. So, first thing we can do is set it up so that the NAS turns itself off after um, AC power delivered to the um, UPS is failed for more than five minutes. Now you can set it up to be the case that if power fails for less than that time, um, but comes back within five minutes, it will not reboot. The next, you can choose whether you want the system to go into an auto, auto protection mode, which is when the system will not allow uh, data to be accessed. It will make sure all of the drives are removed from access and no applications, not a user, no one can access the contents of those drives and the RAID. And as soon as power comes back, the NAS will reboot itself and everything will go back to normal. So that gives you a chance to choose between whether you want to, comp you want to do a complete switch off to cold if you wish, and this will completely power the device down to zero, requiring a physical reboot, or if you want to go to an auto protection mode, otherwise known as a kind of standby, safe mode, hibernation, there's lots of terms for it, you can go for that one. And for this one, I'm going to choose that option with a two minute shutdown. So two minutes after the NAS has been notified that the UPS has been disconnected from a mains power source, by a physically or not, the NAS should action. Also on top of this, you can utilize a system of the NAS acting as a UPS server. And what that means is, if the NAS is told by the UPS that it has lost mains power, it will then notify all the devices that are linked as UPS server clients. So that's something a little bit more technical and kind of the sort of thing that the CyberPower device gives you anyway, but lets the NAS do the work for you. So we're not going to enable that option, but what we are going to go with for our first test is the auto protection mode. We're going to click apply, and from then on, I'm going to make my way to the other side of the room and disconnect mains power from the wall to the UPS and let the UPS do its thing with the USB connection. Before I do so, it's worth highlighting that today's test is going to be utilizing just the graphical user interface from QTS4 via the web browser. That means that we should get alerts here on screen of what we should do, but it's also worth highlighting that if 
you synchronize this device with the cloud using a MyQNAP cloud account and make sure you link admin accounts to uh, client applications for mobile and desktop systems to an admin account you can set it up that when the NAS knows that there's been a UPS power problem, then those users will be automatically notified, be it over the network or the internet, and to their desktop or mobile devices as you see fit. We're not going to test that today, but it's definitely something that should be bared in mind, because the majority of users, if a UPS power failure happens, won't be at their desktop. So the idea of having remote access push notifications as well as a time limit will be hugely beneficial. Perhaps you live in an area where power failures are quite frequent, but intermittent and power always comes back. For you, you might rely on a UPS such as the Cyberlink, uh, sorry, the CyberPower, to sit there as a safety net between those momentary outages. And you don't want the NAS to power down but you will want it to power down if there's no power for an extended period of time and it could potentially destabilize your raid in an unhelpful read-write action that gets terminated. But without further ado, I'm going to make my way to the other side of the room and disconnect this UPS from a power source to see what happens. Hey guys. Disconnected. So straight away we're getting the beeping there that signifies that the UPS has noticed it has got a power failure detected on AC power. On top of that we can see that the fans of the UPS have kicked in there on the rear. This is when the batteries take cover and the system has got some low power um, kind of internal cooling and there you can see on screen the UPS has detected power loss. The notification there letting us know that there has been uh, power loss and it's letting us know that the NAS is about to switch to that auto protection standby mode in two minutes So right now what we can do is just do some read write operations on this NAS within the two minute limit Just to show you that the device will stop itself after a while. So there's a nice album there Why don't we go into all of those photos make a copy of them and make a copy of them in a different directory We'll put it in the public directory. We'll paste it there and we'll let that happen in the background. So right now it's still detecting that power failure and that read write operation that we are committing is still going to happen there in the background. All the files are being written there and the operation was complete there. But now let's take it one step further. Let's chuck some more files in another location. Some more files in another location. We'll leave all that going on during our limitation there. And we can look at the screen there of the background tasks that are being committed there in the background. All being done, the system is still utilizable right now. The system's not in standby mode yet. So let's make our way back and Control Z, start removing some of the things that we've done. Go there, start deleting those photos. Start going back and forth, do more things, delete some more photos. And we'll carry on working like normal as if we're an end user that doesn't know that everything's suddenly gone crazy town. Delete those photos there. Remove, go back to a different folder. There's those Windows Server ISOs that we used in a previous video. Making our way in, we can go into a software one there. Make a copy of that. We'll go into that. Still got access to all of our files and folders here. I can still hear the NAS in the background. Our two minutes is probably almost up. We must be getting quite close to that two minute limit now while we're still utilizing the device in real time. We can go back there, make our way into it. There's multimedia again. There's our photos. Go in, maybe access some photos really. Maybe open an application. We can go into like Q Maggie or something perhaps. And now we can see that the system is starting to cease. The system is now powering down manually in the background and stopping us from doing a number of the jobs and tasks we want to do. Applications are now being suspended in the background. We can see 
that the logins and connections there have occurred. Right now, it has been a couple of minutes longer. So right now, applications are ceasing and the system is starting now to go into that standby mode. If we refresh the page, we can see that now even web access has ceased. QMaggie, if we refresh that tab, we can't even get into the graphical user interface of QMaggie because our QNAP is now going into a zero access mode. It's not allowing us inside. The drives are being dismounted. I'm sure you can see on the camera right there. Uh, alongside the beeping, we can see the LEDs have started flashing there, just showing the dismount of that raid happening in real time. And what we're going to do is give it another minute or so, and then I'm going to head over and reconnect a mains power source to this QNAP NAS. If we use QNAP Finder, search the local area network, see which NAS is we've got ready access to, we can see that TVS 6 bay that I've been utilizing for the Windows Server uh, content, but sadly, the 251D is not present. So now I'm gonna make my way to the other side of the room and reestablish power connectivity to the Cyber Power UPS. Don't know if you heard that in the background, guys, but in the background, the UPS fans have ceased and now the batteries on the UPS are going to re-establish. There was a beep, which I hope you heard, and I didn't talk over it too much. And now that QNAP NAS is re returning from its hibernating state. Now, this can take a couple of minutes while it re-establishes connectivity and remounts our storage. So right now, even if the NAS appears on our list of available drives, the hard drives will not have been remounted. Once again, this process will take uh, a minute or two to reconnect those drives and all of our data and RAID will still be completely accessible. And then after that, we have shown a full recovery of our QNAP NAS 251D with that UPS network connection and our CyberPower 1500 uh, UPS. As we can see, the system itself is now establishing those drives again. So shortly, we should see some mad activity on those LEDs on the front of the NAS. There's our beep uh, saying that the NAS has started reinitialization. And with that beep, we're getting the full setup and rebooting after the remount of those drives. So now the drives have been remounted. We're now moving on to the second stage, internally at least. I know you can't see it on screen while I'm clicking refresh like an absolute hero. What's happening right now is now the drives have been remounted, the system is rebooting QTS and those applications to a previously installed state. Again, we can go into, we're not going to log into that NAS there. What we want to do is go there. We've got ourselves a brand new beep in the background. There will probably be a third beep. Nope, but the drives have been re remounted completely now. I can see the LEDs, and I'm sure you can on screen. The LEDs of that QNAP are now flicking like crazy. Re-establishing those drives and basically remounting our storage in order for us to access QTS. Again, remember, to it is highly advisable to have web access, not just network access, but remote access, to not only know when a UPS failure is going to happen, but also in the event of you using standby mode such as this, allowing you to remotely reboot your NAS from scratch. So there, it's all happening in the background. It's taking a fraction longer than I thought it would. It's still, you know, I would expect it normally to have been back by now, maybe a minute or so from now. We should have establishment with QTS via that graphical user interface of QNAP. But the device did power down and it did cease uh, connectivity to that mounted storage, which is a precaution. I don't know if you guys are aware of that, but if you can have a power failure during a widespread read-write operation, it can destabilize your RAID. It can certainly damage one or more drives. It can lead to uh, integrity issues regarding the data that you write. That's why a lot of people use things like ECC memory. But on top of that, it also, allow, it also can open the door 
to a destabilization of the drives in your RAID if they're spun up or spun down or spun down incorrectly. But while I'm rabbiting away there, we can see that our 251D has now been remounted and everything's ready and accessible. We're just going through the initialization process of the device. We can see here right now Google is going to keep refreshing that tab for us. The IP has not changed. The device itself is still rebooting there in the background. Um, getting that to run there. And hopefully in due course we'll have access to our QNAP NAS. Again, I could have skipped this bit forward, but I don't think it's right to skip forward. I think we should really keep this test as realistic as possible to give you guys some idea what the power up from a UPS could look like. But it is worth highlighting that the more data there is in your NAS, and particularly the more applications you've got in your NAS, and this is a test system to which I've installed a lot of applications, it will make all the difference of just how quickly the device will reboot. Uh, but for now, I think we're looking at now, we've been gone for about five minutes since that reboot. So hopefully we're going to see some action soon because right now I'm looking at the QNAP NAS beeping like crazy and we're seeing the LEDs going nuts too. So the system is rebooting and I'm going to feel like I'm going to keep talking at you until things are successful, which is what I'm going to do. Right now, for me, UPSs and NASs, here we go, we're getting into it finally are kind of um, a very, very important thing. There's been a few NASs, such as the Drobo series, uh, and one of the old Thekus NASs that actually had batteries built into them, that when the NAS lost power, would actually flush the system of data and shut down safely to make sure the system doesn't get the kind of damage that you can receive in interrupted read and write operation from a power failure. However, those systems that add internal batteries generate a lot of heat, and those batteries were never easy to remove. Consequently, with that mad beep in the background, the, the idea of having a battery in a NAS is a great idea in theory, but an external UPS, particularly one that supports a myriad of different systems via lots of different plugs on the rear, is probably better in the long run. But as we can see, our system has recovered from the UPS power failure in the background. I hope this video has been helpful to you. And again, once again, thanks to CyberPower for supplying this UPS for today's video. I don't get a lot of samples, but when I do, I genuinely appreciate them. But thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video. We've got loads of tests on this device still to come, and I look forward to sharing them with you. Click like if you've enjoyed the video. Click subscribe to learn more. And otherwise, I'll see you next time.